there is one thing that I wanted to cover and talk about. I got one more little tip regarding velocity banking uh, with credit cards. Okay. So this is something that I saw on the internet. I was watching some other velocity banking coaches out there that give good information. There's one channel that I'll watch every now and then. I like his material, like the way he talks to his viewers. Uh, it's called, uh, it's his name, Mike Adams. He has a YouTube channel and he talks about velocity banking. He also covers real estate investing. I don't think he ever talks about infinite banking. Not sure if he's on that yet. But um, he had a video that said uh, how to avoid paying interest on balance transfer fees. How to avoid balance transfer fees. It was pretty cool. And it was so obvious that I was like, oh wow, I didn't, I didn't even think of that. Why didn't I think of that? All right, so um, how to avoid the balance transfer fees. The first main thing is negotiate. I think that, you know, I didn't watch the whole video, so I'm sure there's probably other things, but this is huge. I did not think of this at all. Negotiating, like that makes perfect sense. And what I mean by this is you could literally, like let's say you've had uh, your credit cards for years and they have a 2% balance transfer fee, a 3%, 4 5% balance transfer fee. Before you do the balance transfer, call the bank and ask, uh, hey, is it possible? I'm looking to make a large purchase. Is it possible that you can waive this balance transfer fee just one time? Just one time. Can you waive that fee? And being that maybe that credit card has a 0% offer with balance transfers, well now you just got rid of the fee to borrow money. You just got rid of your cost of borrowing money with, with the credit card and you have this 0% introductory rate for you know eight, nine, 12 months, whatever it is. So that is huge. Right, so you could be doing velocity banking, right? You could be doing velocity banking with your line of credit or your HELOC, and you do your norm your normal chunk, you know, every six to nine months, let's say. But then with a with a credit card, you could structure another, you know, miniature small chunk at zero cost, pay the minimum monthly payment on it, all right? Pay the monthly payment on it, zero cost, uh, for, and then you have a zero offer, 0% 0 offer for maybe one year, right? And you know what you could do? Maybe, because you're smart and you removed escrow from your mortgage and the, uh, and the insurance and all that, and you, and you pay it for the year, not by the month, maybe that small chunk could be the cost of your taxes per year. So check this out. Let's say, you're, let's say your taxes on your property is 7,000 for the whole year, right? It's 7,000. And you are able to do a balance transfer at no cost for, for one year. Cool. So 7K sits in the credit card, and then 1% of 7K, I think, is $70, right? Let me do the math on that, I think. So 7,000 times 1%, 70 bucks. 7,000 times 2% is $140. So your monthly minimum payment will be anywhere between 70 and 140, okay? So you're paying this monthly payment for the 12 months, nine months, 15 months, whatever the offer is on the credit card. Check this out, ready? 
and um, you're using the card throughout the year, right? And you're continuing to do your normal velocity banking with your line of credit and your HELOC because the 7K went towards, you know, either the, the, the cost of your taxes. So you, sh so you shifted it out of the HELOC itself. So you, you've shifted an expense, all right? That's what we did here. So we've shifted the expense. And you can do this with anything, right? So whatever you have that's annual, your car insurance, your whatever you have that, that are like annual stuff that you may not be able to run through a credit card, but with a balance transfer, you could. And at zero cost, with a 0% offer for an extended period of time, we shift the expense. Now we have more temporary cash flow, do we not? Working for me in the line of credit in the HELOC to bring down that normal chunk that I was doing. You pay 70 to 140 for the 12 months. So 140 times 12, that's 1680. So, so you paid 1680 and 70 times 12 is 840. So you'll, you would have paid between 840 and 1680 during that 0% offer. So let's go conservative, 7,000 minus 840. So my balance will be at 6,160 before I have to um, pay it back. Now, maybe, just maybe, I could potentially increase the credit card limit during that one year, or I get a new credit card with a new offer, new credit card with a new offer at a 0% rate and a 0% balance transfer just by negotiating. You never know. Hey, Jay, just for the first time, you know, you got a new credit card now, so you call the bank and say, hey, just for the first time, can this be a 0% uh, balance transfer fee? 0% fee for the balance transfer. I'm looking to make a large purchase. Can you help me? The worst thing they say is no, right? Uh, so maybe get a new credit card offer, new rate. <laughs> and if there's enough credit limit, you could shift the 6,160 plus maybe another cost plus another cost. And because you can only do the balance transfer one time for one thing, maybe you're able to shift this 6,160 at 0% for another 12 months, let's say, so I don't have to pay it back, right? Meanwhile, you could probably be chunking more or you're just chunking faster now towards whatever debt you're trying to kill. And because you have this new credit card, a new offer, maybe it's 0% on balance transfers, and purchases so maybe you could run about five to seven grand of purchases so now you've got 5k plus the so the 5k plus the 6160 now you've got eleven thousand one hundred and sixty dollars of shifted expenses not shifted debt shifted expenses this is money that I was already going to spend anyways. And in addition to that 11,160 and all the other money is we're getting uh, cash back, right? Cash back, statement credit, points, right? Getting points back on this thing. So that's huge, that's pretty huge. And then my new monthly minimum payment on 11,160, 11,160 times 1%, 111 bucks. I can do that. It was, it's money I'm gonna spend anyways. So now I'm just lowering when I spend that and I'm pushing out when I actually pay it. So my new monthly payment might be 111, between 111 and 223. And now that, 0% so all of it is going towards principal so you go another 12 months out 11,160 
223. I'll do the 111. 111 times 12 months. So 1332 minus the 11,000. 11,160 minus 1332. So now balance 24 months later, 9,828. And you just keep doing it again and again and again. I know a lady with 60 plus credit cards. So you can just do it again and again and again. And you're killing debt with your velocity banking strategy even faster. So we're just leveraging credit cards in addition to our main debt tool, the line of credit of the HELOC. And all from just negotiation with the bank. How many people do you really think are going to ask for 0% fees on balance transfer? Nobody. Only you and a couple thousand people watching my channel and the other guy's channel. So this, this is information that's unheard of. Unheard of. Nobody knows this stuff. This is amazing. So ride the wagon for as long as you can. Right? Negotiate with the banks. Build relationships. Your loyalty to the bank doesn't matter. Their loyalty to you matters, whether, whether or not they're willing to give you something, right? So remember this, your loyalty to a bank does not matter. What I mean by that is that we can bounce from bank to bank. We don't have to stay with one specific bank and show our loyalty. The only time we need to do that is in the beginning of obtaining a debt tool or a line of credit. Yes, we have to move our banking there. But now if we're talking credit cards, as long as you have really good credit uh, and a long credit history, so, so this will be available to people with good credit. So if you have bad credit, you might wanna just, you know, hey, this is something I can look forward to. I would not risk trying to get the credit card first, then call the bank and ask, and then they say no, and now you've got a useless credit card that you just added to your uh, utilization, they just added to your credit score. So this would only make sense, in my opinion, for people who have the main debt tool. You have the line of credit, you have the HELOC, or you have a life insurance policy, you have the main debt tool. And all this is doing is just adding more flavor, icing on the cake being able to move money at 0%, lowering my borrowing cost to nothing. 